So now that we've covered uh, in 5.3 the sum and difference identities for cosine, uh, in 5.4 we basically look at the two other big guys, the sine and tangent, and what their sum and differences are. Uh, again, uh, here's the actual um, identities themselves. Uh, you don't need to memorize them. Um, they'll be given in a cheat sheet or you can have them out or whatever the case might be. Uh, just make sure that you can use them and go from there. Um, Fight the urge again. The common mistakes uh, is to say that the sine of A plus B is the sine of A plus the sine of B. That is uh, just like the cosine, that is not true. All right? The sine of the sum is basically the sine of the first angle, cosine of the second, plus the cosine of the first, the sine of the second. And then the same thing with the sine of the difference. Fight the urge to make the mistake of distributing the sine because that's not what happens, right? We do not distribute function names, right? Uh, the sine of a difference is basically the sine of the first, cosine of the second, minus the cosine of the first, sine of the second. So there, there's basically how you do that. And of course, the tangent follows through. It's a little bit more complicated uh, than the sine and the cosine. Uh, that shouldn't come as a surprise because we know tangent is sine over cosine. And that's kind of inherently how the proof, one of the proofs goes in terms of that. Um, we are just going to use them. So if you're interested in a proof, I'll have a vid in the module. Um, I think the book also has some proofs. Um, so you guys can take a look at that if you're interested. What we're going to do is just use them. And so like we did with cosine, what I like to do is just get familiar with them a little bit. Just to kind of, we'll use the calculator to kind of verify that what seems to be going on here is true. And, you know, just it'd be kind of a quasi proof if you would. So, you know, let's just take a number. Um, you know, how about the number 57? Um, uh, we'll talk 57 degrees. And so let's find the sine of 57 and the tangent to 57. And then we'll play around with these two things. So I'm going to bring out my Desmos calculator here. And uh, it looks like the, let me bring it up to here. All right, it looks like the, uh, make sure I'm in degree mode, the sine of 57, right, is about 0 0.8387, we'll say, if we round off to, de uh, to four decimals. The tangent, of 57 is roughly about 1.5399, all right, if we round off to four decimals. So there's, we've established what the sine of 57 and the tangent of 57 is. So in terms of using these identities, you know, what adds up to 57? Lots of things do, so you could, you know, be creative, but off the top of my head, I think uh, 57 is basically 40 plus 17. So if I write it as a sum, Using the uh, formula up here, it's the sine of the first angle times the cosine of the second, and then we're going to add the cosine of the first angle and the sine of the second. Okay, and uh, so when we reach over for our calculator and kind of type that in, uh, we'll see that we'll get the same value that we got here. So we got the sine of 40 and then we're going to multiply that to the cosine of 17 and then we're going to add to that the cosine of the 40 and the sine of the 17 and lo and behold we got the same decimal answer which is expected because this is an identity uh, same thing with the tangent right what's the tangent of 40 degrees plus 17 well according to our formula right the tangent of a sum is we take the tangent of the first angle, subtract the tangent of the second angle, and then divide it by one plus the tangent of the first and the tangent of the second. All right, so that's what that identity, the uh, addition identity is telling us. So again, coming over here to my calculator, just to kind of do a uh, technical proof, um, I got a fraction, so, um, all right, so where do, where do I, I've got a fraction here, and on the top we have the tangent of 40 degrees, and we are subtracting the tangent of 17, and then on the bottom we've got 1 plus the tangent of 40, and we're multiplying that to the tangent of 17. Okay, 
And so, oops, I think I used the wrong identity. Yep, I did, right? So uh, for the plus, it's a plus up here and a minus down there. So I screwed that up. All right, so let me go change those signs. That's a minus. And upstairs, that's a plus. Okay, and there we go. So that's the same decimal that we got. Um, I think by uh, what I did is I found the tangent to 40 minus 17. So I, I ended up using that one when I should have been using that one. So be careful, right? So that kind of verifies that the sum does, does what they do. Uh, 57, uh, again, you know, maybe we can write 57 as 70 minus, um, what would that be, 13? Right, so 70 minus 13 is a way to write 57. So the sine of 70, oops, minus 13 degrees. All right, that according to this, that would be the sine of 70 and times the cosine of 13 minus the cosine of 70 and the sine of 13. Okay, so according to that uh, guy there. So let's go ahead and we'll... Uh, Clear this out, and we'll type in the sine stuff for 57 degrees as a as a subtraction. So we got the sine of 70 and the cosine of 13, and we're going to subtract the cosine of 70 and the sine of 17. Okay. Oops, 13. What am I thinking? I'm thinking of the last problem, 13. All right, and so there you go. Same decimal value that we got before, right? So 0.8387. And again, if we did the tangent, right, the tangent of 70 minus 13, well, that one would be this guy. And so we're talking about the tangent of 70 degrees minus the tangent of 13 degrees all over 1 plus the tangent of 70, the tangent of 13. All right, so that's what the thing's telling us. We'll just reach over to the calculator and verify it with technology. And like I said, the proof of this is, uh, I'll provide a video with the proof that this is actually true. So we've got a fraction, and we've got the uh, tangent of 70, and we are subtracting this time the tangent of 13. And then on the bottom, we have one uh, plus the tangent of 70 and the tangent of 13. Okay, giving us the same decimal that it should, right, at 57 degrees. So there's kind of a quasi-proof that those formulas do work. Of course, there's lots of ways to break up 57 into a sum or a difference, but because these identities are true for everything in the domain, it doesn't really matter how you rewrite 57. Any addition, any subtraction uh, is going to uh, create the situation for these identities. All right, so there's kind of your break in, your introduction. And so, like we do with all these, we're going to go find exact values with them. We're going to do some simplification. We're going to do some verifying. And those are coming in some videos coming soon. See you then.